Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Morbid early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. What if you were trafficked into the inner circle of a cult and signed a billion-year contract at 13? What would you do? This is Actually Happening is a weekly podcast from Wondery that features extraordinary true stories of life-changing events told by the people who lived them. Follow This Is Actually Happening on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, weirdos. I'm Alina. I'm Ash. And this is Morbid. Listener tale episode, and you know what that means. It is brought to you by you for you from you and all about you, baby. It's also morbid uh, in the nighttime. It's morbid at twelve twenty three a.m. Morbid at almost midnight. It's just a little past. Well, uh, and you know what? Before we jump into this, we have a little bit of like news, I suppose. Yeah, kind of. A change in process, I suppose. Breaking news. That, exactly that. Uh, So (laughs) we've been, you know, we've been, like, we changed the way we did things. We added another episode every week with a listener tale on Fridays. You know, the process has been different for a few months, and we've been seeing how it's going. Yeah. And... It just feels different. It fe- it's it's it hasn't we haven't been able to settle into this enough. No. Um and we've been kind of taking your feedback and like mulling over it and we've been comparing that with how we're feeling. Mm-hmm. And we're all lining up. Yeah, we, <laughs> all of we're us. all aligned. The stars yeah. and us are all aligned. We're all lining up together and we decided that we're going to go back to the way things were mm-hmm. before. When when we started, like the way things were when you guys like, the way we came. got you all here, the way you came to us, you know, we started out and like after, you know, I, I don't know, it must have been like a year or two in that we started doing two episodes a week and mm-hmm. that mini morbid became a full episode. Yep. And then we were at two episodes a week and we did one episode every every month that was a listener tale. And you guys dug that. Right. Like, it felt like it, that was, and we dug that. I was just going to say, and we dug like that. Like, it felt, like, doable. We felt like we were always able to put enough time and effort into the main episodes. And I think we're not feeling that way right now. No. And we have Dave, who's a really big help. He's our, like, research assistant now, and he's fucking phenomenal. But, like, it's a lot. And, like, and so, mm-hmm. when, and when we change to three episodes a week, it's just, like, with, you know, the Buffy podcast and with Scream. And, and Frozen Head. Yeah, Frozen Head. Like, we're, we're burning out a little bit. And we're we recognizing that, that we were not, but we <laughs> <know>. are. <laughs> well, we are. <laughs> like, we lied. Um, but, and I think people are noticing. I've gotten a few messages that are like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I've <laughs> like, gotten a lot of messages which also, like that. Thank, thank you. you for giving a shit. Like, and thank you for noticing. I feel like that yeah. says so much about our listener base. It does. Because, like, that, and that's when it started to hit us. We were like, all right, people oh, no. are seeing that we're getting tired. So we we got together. We decided, you know what? We're taking it back old school. Mm -hmm. We're going to do two main huge episodes every week because I feel like these episodes are getting meatier and meatier and we want to continue with that because that's the main attraction. Every time you say meteor, I always think that you're talking about a meteor. Like a comet. Yeah. Yeah. I am. No. They're getting more space. No, 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 no. We're not. We are not talking about space I'm just real scared about space right now, but like you can't control it. I'm in a phase. It's, but yeah. You know, either way. The, uh, we want to keep these main episodes, like, really be able to focus all our attention and, like, you know, we don't want to burn ourselves out. We don't want to burn Dave out. <laughs> and we don't want to burn you out. We don't want to burn you out. So we're going to take it back. We're going to do, still do, the two main episodes. Every week. Like, that's not going to change, so don't worry. That'll never change. It's keeping it the same it's always been. But instead of doing the listener tales every single Friday, we're going to do it just once a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just feels right. It feels like it's going to be a treat again. It, it used to be a treat, you know, like it was always yeah. that thing that we were like, oh, guys, we're doing a listener tale because of like, whoa, that case was gnarly. Like, exactly. let's, let's have a palate cleanser here. And now you'll have them to look forward to. I feel like when it's like every Friday, it's like it, it's been fun. Like, I, I don't oh, hate yeah. it by any means. But, no way. 
But I'm like, now it's going to be like exciting to do listener tales, like even more so. Yeah, it becomes a treat for us and it becomes a treat for you guys again. Mm-hmm. And that's all we really want to do. We just want to like, make this a fun experience for everybody. If you eat ice cream every night after dinner, yeah. it's not that exciting to go get ice cream anymore. <laughs> but if you get it once a month, it's a lot of fun. Or like once a week. So just letting you know that you know, that's what's going to happen. Again, two main episodes sticking around. Don't yeah. worry about that. And we'll let you know because it's going to be instead of the Friday episode – like, we're going to figure out where these two main episodes are going to release now during yeah. the week because we want to make sure we're not putting them in a place where there's too much time between them. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, Tuesday, Thursday is going to be good. Yeah, That's but we'll let I'm... you know. Don't worry, because we're just nailing that detail down. Yeah, we're, we're having combos. Um, but again, this is really just better for everybody. I think it's uh, you're still getting the exact same amount, like, amount of main episodes. That's not changing. Mm-hmm. But it's just we don't want to burn out. And we don't want to start, you know like not being able to put as much as we want to put into main episodes, you know? Yeah. So, so I think this will be good for everybody. And again, this is like, we're taking your feedback. Like this is, this is your show as much as it is, as it is ours. And we just want to make it what you want it to be. Exactly. Sorry. Somebody sent mail and it made a noise. How fucking dare they? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So thanks for like, you know, sharing that. And thanks for giving a shit about us and actually like, messaging us being like are you okay we are okay we were just we're, yeah. we really were burning out though like there was it was starting to get a little much hundo p and you know we love this and we love you and we just want to keep keep doing that so you look so earnest right now i am earnest yeah, i know ex- you are i'm but excited you just, about like because i feel like it. it's i love morbid for what it is and i want it to be what it was you mm-hmm. know like i don't want it to change and keep like evolving is one thing changing is a different thing you just read my fucking mind you know i was why? saying that because we're taking it back old school kicking it we always read each other's minds <laughs> that <laughs> we, never stopped, that I was but, say. <laughs> I'm, I'm just nostalgic right now psychic abilities so you know what here we are we're in a listener tale right now here so, we are and here it's we are in six minutes so we should shut the fuck up and get on to it we should shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. So you know what? The first tale that I'm going to read is called The Time My Grandfather Was Kidnapped and The Time My Grandfather Arranged an Illegal Adoption with the Help of the Capone Mafia. I absolutely love a two-for-one listener tale. Who doesn't? Who doesn't, my friend? Show me someone. Don't, please. Uh, so this <laughs> one says, Bite Hi, ladies. My name is Valerie, and I'm new here. I Welcome. discovered your Buffy Rewatcher podcast. I love that you found us through the Buffy Rewatcher podcast. I know. That's the first time that we've yeah. heard that. And I'm having the best time listening to you discuss my favorite TV show. In middle school, my friends and I assigned each other Buffy personas. I was Buffy. And, my, and I named my dog Angel. <laughs> Anyway, I soon discovered you have been podcasting about my other favorite subject, true crime, and my love for you blossomed. Our love for you did the same. I started listening from the beginning and I'm catching up quickly. I'm submitting two other two stories about my grandfather as told to me by my father and still somewhat in his voice. Pick your favorite. Read both. They're short. I've attached to Putifa. No idea how that's spelled or what it even means. Again, I'm new here. But rumor has it that you like to read large fonts, and I support that. That's the truth. <laughs> I love you. All the rumors are true, yeah. I never got to meet my... I'm not all of them. I never got to meet my... Oh, my God, no. I was just singing Lizzo. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I never got to meet my grandfather. <laughs> as he passed away the year before I was born. From the stories I've heard, he was quite a character. He was movie star handsome, picture attached. He was. He was. With a quick and biting wit. So he was a dreamboat. Uh, He found himself in a lot of colorful situations. Feel free to use our names. From what I know about my grandfather, he'd love to have 15 minutes of fame. (laughs) I love that. My favorite thing is there's a picture of him in an old-timey boxer pose. I I know. And his shirt says, Aye. (laughs) (laughs) Aye. I. No, no, it doesn't. It says, I. That's exactly what it says. Yeah. It says it in that voice. This too. guy's shirt wouldn't just be like, I. It's, <laughs> I. I. Like, I'm going to punch you in your oh, face, dog. Oh, man. Oh, all right. This story takes place in the 1920s. <laughs> oh, it's for Elena. Oh, yeah. It's my, my time. The Hillman Department Store was one of the biggest department stores in Chicago. 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 Edward Hillman Jr. was the Chicago department store heir who was in the newspapers for his glamorous life. 
His marriages and divorces to actresses brought him further local celebrity status. My grandfather, Edward Hillman, hereby known as Ed, was a handsome and dapper young gentleman around the same age as Edward Jr. One evening, Ed, meaning her grandfather, was accosted by three buttheads forced into their car and brought to their apartment for ransom. Despite his protests, he could not convince these assholes that he wasn't <laughs> the Edward Hillman. Son of the Hillman department store owner. Oh, it's a, they it's had the a case same of name. mistaken identity. Yes. They told him that he had to come up with $5,000 in order to be released. Oh, my God. Ed thought quickly and said that he'd call his kid brother, Herbert, to get the funds and bring it over. Herbert was a tough 16-year-old. He was part of a Jewish gang that was known for getting into fights and minor trouble. Herb was an amateur boxer called the Smiling Aye. Slugger because he loved to fight and fought with a smile on his face. That's I iconic. love this. So that was that was Herbert. Yeah, yeah, it was. Ed called his brother and said, matter of factly, I'm in a bit of trouble and I need five thousand dollars. Please go pick it up and bring it over. Telling Herb to bring $5,000 gave Herb a clear understanding of what the situation was because it was a lot of money in those days. <laughs> and Ed and Herb's combined bank account was about $5,000 short of that. <laughs> a few hours later, these criminals were looking out the window waiting for their money and they saw a young guy approaching. Herb knocked on the apartment door and feeling no threat and happy that their mission was successful, one of the kidnappers opened the door. Hello. As he opened the door, Herb greeted him with a hard punch to the face, which broke his nose and splattered a lot of blood. His mama said, knock you out. That's right, she did. Then Herb rushed at the second man and overpowered him with a series of punches. Oh my God. The third man surrendered. <laughs> The third guy was like, no, I don't even want to deal with that. Oh my God, I just had a smoker's cough He reminds that. me of Arthur um, the Arthur Shelby from Peaky Blinders. Yeah, me too. I'm just saying. Like, he's a boxer and he's like, wily. Does he say, I? He does not say, I. <laughs> uh, all this happened in a matter of seconds. <clears throat> Tom, or excuse me, Herb. I almost said Tom from Thomas Shelby. From <laughs> Herb proceeded to empty their wallets and take their cash. <laughs> Hell yeah. He was like, you want my yeah, cash? I'm really? going to take yours. He took note of the addresses on their IDs and prepared a note for them to sign, each ple pledging Herbert $50 for his troubles, which he later collected. He made them pay for him kicking the shit out of That's them. That's hilarious. He was like, I had to come out of my house and come beat the shit out of you and save my brother. And you're going to pay so me for that. Me. That's iconic. After thanking the quote unquote gentleman nicely for being such good sports, Herb and Ed left. <laughs> My dad, wow. my dad asked his father what he was dur doing during the melee. He replied, I was filing my nails. What? <laughs> As the fight is happening, he's like, I was filing my nails. Wow. I love that a lot. Ed and Herb are already icons, but let's go to um, this illegal adoption thing. Let's fucking do it. In the early 1940s, <clears throat> my grandfather owned and operated a currency exchange in Cicero, Illinois. Around the corner was a business owned and operated by Ralph Capone, Al Capone's brother. Wowie Kazowie. <laughs> the office was used to collect money from bookies, the numbers game, lottery, and other amusements. Since Ralph Capone collected money in smaller dominations, $1, $5, $10 bills, he approached my grandfather about exchanging these small bills for larger ones, including $1,000 bills that the government was taking out of circulation. My grandfather obliged and got as many thousand dollar bills as he could, and Ralph was very appreciated. I did not know that there was ever thousand dollar bills. An attractive 18-year-old girl came to the currency exchange regularly to cash her check. My grandfather enjoyed talking with her because she was so pretty and kind. Aww. One day, she came in looking very upset. My grandfather asked her what was wrong. Was she ill? She confessed that she was pregnant and her bro and her boyfriend had no intention of marrying her. Dick. My grandfather remembered that his brother-in-law knew a couple interested in adopting, adopting a baby and was growing impatient with the red tape. My grandfather put two and two together and said to the girl, 
I think I might be able to help you out. When you come back next week, I might have some good news for you. Oh! He contacted the childless couple and told them the situation. They agreed on an arrangement. Look at this guy just fucking making things happen. Making dreams come true. When the girl came in, he told her his idea about placing the child with the couple and told her the financial compensation. The couple was willing to pay all expenses, including her hospital bills, subsidize her wages while she was unable to work, plus give her several thousand dollars as a gift. Oh, my God. After a brief meeting with her and her boyfriend, everything was finalized. She had a baby girl, and the transfer was made very smoothly. Everyone seemed very happy with the arrangement. Months later, the baby daddy thought it over and felt that he could have and should have gotten more money get the fuck out of I here. love that he did not want to be there. I thought you were going to yeah. say like, oh, he thought it over and he was he like, no, no, I want my baby back. No, he just thought he should get more money for his child. Oh, okay. Yeah. He went to my... he did so much yeah, work. Exactly. He went to my grandfather and demanded that he receive more money or my grandfather was going to have, quote unquote, a big problem with him. He's like, you don't know who I work with. Yeah. <laughs> After thinking it over, my grandfather decided to go visit Ralph Capone to seek his advice. There we go. Being an amateur actor, my grandfather laid the story on so thick that it brought tears to the gangster's eyes. Oh, my God. Capone told my grandfather to tell the boyfriend to meet him at a certain location and he'll give him the additional money. I am alive. My grandfather did just as he was told and got to the meeting place a little early to wait the baby daddy showed up wearing a big smile walking towards my grandfather greedily looking forward to the money transaction at the same time two rough looking guys got out of their car they took the man by each of his arms dragged him into the car and sped away shit (laughs) months later my grandfather was walking near his business and spotted the boyfriend walking towards him Upon seeing my grandfather, the boyfriend turned and ran in the opposite direction as fast as he could. The 40s were fucking wild. I love it. Like, there were days where you could just, like, fuck somebody up for being a dick. And everybody yeah. was just like, okay. Yeah. And everybody was just like, yeah, that guy probably deserved it. Gonna look the other way. Yeah, I'm gonna look the other way, man. It's fucking wild. Wow. That was a Valerie. That was a good one. That was a good old tale. Yeah. I loved it so much. A few days before Christmas, Janelle Matthews disappeared from her home. There were no signs of a struggle, no eyewitnesses, no DNA recovered. But what if the answer had always been there? What if a true crime fanatic who'd been talking about the case was more than just an obsessive fan? The groundbreaking true crime podcast Suspect is back with a new story that attempts to separate fact from fiction and one man's true crime obsession from a motive for murder. He says, don't with me, Officer Edgerton. I've buried more people than you'll know. He's providing information that hadn't even been released to the news yet. He's such a good liar that he can convince the juror that he wasn't involved. Follow Suspect wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, Prime members, you can binge the entire series ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. And I think I'll love this next tale, too. Ooh, this is a good good title. I'm getting hoarse. Ooh, that's not the title. Um, It's entitled, We Could Have Been on Dateline. Oh, no. That's not good. No. (laughs) That's not something you want to be on. That is definitely not it. It says, hello, I've attached a listener tale about a close call on vacation. I call it, We Could Have Been on Dateline. Thank you for reading. I don't know if I can say your you I can. can. Awesome. It says, Hi, ladies. My name is Kristen. You can use my name and all the names in the story. Thanks. And this listener tale is a collaboration of some of your most loyal listeners. Oh, I love that. Well, almost all of us. One of us doesn't like spooky things. It's probably my fault for making her watch The Exorcist when she was 12. Sorry, Jody. Sorry, Jody. Sorry, Jody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Jody. <laughs> just jokes. <laughs> we will all be so excited if you choose our story for an episode. Oh, shit. We'll be famous amongst our nearing middle-aged mom friends. Hell yeah. We'll call them up and pour a glass of wine because <laughs> you're famous, baby. <laughs> You're about to make it big, kid. Your name's going to be in lights. You're going to be in pictures. You too, Jody. Just kidding. It's only a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yay. This story is about a time when the four of us came close to being featured on an episode of Dateline in the early 2000s. Let's go back to the summer of 2000. Let's, let's go back to that. <laughs> 
Oh, you know what's wild? <laughs> Already trailing off. I um, have had that Jonas Brothers song stuck in my head. I said, I've been to the <laughs> 3000. And I'm getting homicidal over it. That's and wild. 2000 just reminded just me of that. Just made you think of it. But anyways, we're not going forward. We're going backwards yeah. to the summer of 2000 when four friends from Seattle named Emily, Erin, Jody, and Kristen. That's you. I think it is. <laughs> who just graduated from high school took their first trip together. That is the most exciting trip. Yeah. My grandfather owned a townhouse in Lake Tahoe and offered it to me and some friends uh, for a week as a graduation gift. What a fun way to celebrate our newly found quote unquote adulthood. <laughs> of course, we had parents who weren't going to let us go on chaperone. <laughs> so Emily's mom drove us down and Jody's mom's minivan. Once we got to Tahoe, Emily's mom set up her own vacation elsewhere, so the four of us had the townhouse to ourselves. Let me just say that we were good girls, like really good girls. We created a pyramid of soda cans that we had consumed above the fireplace, not beer cans. Oh my God, you're me. We went to a museum. We swam in the lake. We took one of those old-timey oh photos where we were dressed up like cowboy, sex worker, bank robbers. <laughs> the riskiest thing we did on this trip was go see a fortune teller in downtown Tahoe, which make it made us feel like super cool risk takers. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's so funny. We were like just talking about we were. that that was you. The townhouse was a part of a large complex near uh, Marina. I was about to say Marinera. Wow. <laughs> near some Marinera. Near a Marinera. <laughs> <laughs> Near a fine chicken parmesan. <laughs> the townhouse was a mozzarella stick. <laughs> oh, man. Late the, night morbid. <laughs> all the townhouses. <laughs> Uh, all uh, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, all of the townhouses looked exactly the same from the outside. Our particular townhouse was three stories tall. We walked in a front door from the driveway and up a set of stairs to the main living space with the kitchen and the living room, then walked up another set of stairs to reach the top floor where the bedrooms were. Lots of walking. There were two bedrooms. One had double twin beds just off the hallway. That's where Emily and Erin slept. At the end of the hallway was a master bedroom where Jody and I slept. The bathroom had two doors, one that led into the master bedroom and another into the hallway, so you could walk from the master bedroom through the bathroom to get to, into the hallway. There was a queen-sized bed against the back wall and a little love seat next to the door that led to the hallway. The master bedroom had a huge skylight. It also had a door that led to the outside. We never used this door as it went down a long flight of steep stairs to the grassy common spaces between the two uh, between the townhouses. Well, one night after drinking more soda and watching The Cutting Edge or some other <laughs> 90s rom-com, we fell asleep. It's important to note that at this time, Jody had forgotten to pack pajamas. Oh. Oh, that sucks. And had just purchased, uh, purchased some that day on a trip to Target, my favorite place. She uh, and I had been friends since we were two, so we didn't super care about sharing a bed in undies. At some point during the night, I woke up from a deep sleep and noticed a large full moon illuminating the bedroom. At first, I wasn't sure what had me wake up, and I lay there taking stock of the room. It was then that I heard loud snoring. My sleepy brain, trying to make sense of the situation, assumed it was Emily snoring. Sorry, I'm not sure why I attributed loud snoring to you. <laughs> Around the same moment, I also realized that Jody was saying something to me in a whisper voice. Obviously, the snoring had woken up Jody, too. I responded, probably in a louder voice, that I thought, Why is Emily snoring so loud? Jody whispered back, It's not Emily, it's the man. What? My sleepy brain couldn't keep up with this no. new information. What man? <laughs> what I said, fuck? again, probably in a voice that was louder than it should have been given the situation. Jody shushed me and pointed. It was then that I realized there was a very large man. What the fuck? Sound asleep on the love seat on the other side of the room next to the bedroom door. Perhaps three feet from our bed. Are you kidding me? Thank God Jody had woken up and made a plan because I was still processing the situation. She whispered to me to get out of the bed on my side, the furthest away from the man, and quietly go through the bathroom door so we wouldn't have to walk right next to him to get out of the room. Remember, this is 2000. We don't have cell phones. Holy so in shit. order to get help, we have to call from inside the house. 
We go downstairs to the kitchen. Jody picks up the largest knife in the kitchen just in case. Again, she's thinking much more quickly than she, I am. That's a Jody. That's why Jody doesn't like spooky things. She's lived spooky things. Yeah, Jody knows what the she's, fuck is up. She's good. She is she's preparing for the next she thing, is. you know. And she calls 911 from the kitchen phone. I can hear the operator ask, "What's your emergency?" Jody, we're staying in a condo on vacation and we just woke up to a man asleep in our bedroom. Fuck. Operator, do you know the man? Oh, Bitch, why would I be on. calling 911? Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. See you later. (laughs) Jody. (laughs) No, we went to sleep, and when we woke up, he was just there, asleep, on our couch. Operator, you're sure you don't know this person? You know what? Let me go check. (laughs) Oh, it's just Glenn. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Glenn comes over and falls asleep sometimes. (laughs) Jody, no. Operator, what's your address? Pause for us to frantically find the address of the townhouse on a brochure or something on the kitchen counter. (laughs) Operator, you need to get out of the house immediately. The police are on their way. Fuck, I almost did it again. Marinara sauce. Marina security has been alerted. Get out of the house. Holy shit. Jody, but our our friends are still asleep upstairs. Operator, the police will be there soon. Get out of the house. Oh, my God. My God. As fully grown adults, we wondered why we didn't go wake up Emily and Erin to get them out of the house. But at the time, it just made sense to just get out. Okay, well, you were teenagers at the time, and somebody's <clears throat> telling you, get out of the house. You get like, out of the you house. You did the right thing. It's like the end of Black Christmas. She wants to go save everybody, but they're already dead. But it's so just, what are you going to do? Get out of the fucking house. We hang up, and I'm fairly certain Jody put the knife back so we didn't meet the cops with a large knife in our hands. You could have. And head to the last set of stairs in our bare feet. Remember how Jody had just purchased pajamas? As we stand outside in the driveway waiting for the police, we are somehow calm enough to joke that it feels like we're in an episode of Cops. And if Jody hadn't gotten pajamas that day, she'd be the crazy lady standing and waiting for the police outside oh my in her underwear. <laughs> It felt like the police and the marina security were there within seconds. We waited outside for a minute while the police officers asked us about the situation. Again, yes, there's a man on the couch in the master bedroom. No, we don't know him. No, we don't know how they got in. Our friends are still asleep upstairs in the room Jesus. next to him. Because we're barefoot and in our PJs after assessing the situation, they have us come in and sit on the couch while they talk to the man. Eventually, we see what seems like an eight-foot guy walk down the stairs Holy escorted shit. by two different police officers. Behind him, in PJs, and with their eyes as wide as I have ever seen them, walk Emily and Aaron. After he was gone, the officers took us into the master bedroom. Did you know that the outside door to the bedroom isn't locked? What the fuck? What? We had locked the door, or at least we thought we had. Even though it was a few decades before your podcast, (laughs) we already knew that fresh air was for dead people. Hell yeah. And we for sure had locked that door. What we didn't know was that the lock was broken. No. We hadn't ever checked it from the outside. We had no idea that the door, which led directly into our bedroom, had been open the entire time oh we'd been staying God. there. It turned out that this guy was staying at another townhouse at the marina. He came back to what he thought was his place, completely wasted, and walked up the long, steep staircase to our bedroom, which just happened to have a broken lock. Holy shit. We spent the rest of the night playing Monopoly or some other game that we found in the condo because we certainly weren't going back to sleep. We definitely made some comments about how we could have been on cops or worse, Dateline, if we'd actually gotten yeah. murdered. The next morning, we all called our parents and told them that we had to call the police, but it wasn't because of anything we had done. <laughs> Trust me. Remember, we were good girls. They were all thankful we were okay, and the lock got fixed within an hour. Reflecting on this now as a parent, I cannot imagine yes. how they must have felt getting Seriously. that call. We calmed our nerves by watching more 90s rom-coms, adding to the soda can pyramid, and playing more games. Hell yeah. We ended up having a really great trip. When I texted Emily asking if I should write this story up as a listener tale, she said, Ooh, yes, man, we got so lucky. Yeah, you did. We did get so lucky. We very easily could have become a full-fledged episode of Morbid. Four murdered girls on a vacation in Lake Tahoe. Even though we never saw the man again and his entering our bedroom was apparently an innocent drunken mistake, Jody still swears that she saw him giving her a creepy smirk when he walked Ew. down the stairs with the officers. She still remembers how gross it was. He didn't even have the nerve to look apologetic. Oh my god. At the time, we didn't let ourselves think too much about what could have happened. What if he'd stumbled in drunk and climbed into bed with us? Ugh. What if he discovered he'd hit the jackpot and found four innocent terror uh, innocent teenage girls to terrorize? What if? Wow. Thank God the what ifs didn't happen, but you can bet that every time I stay somewhere on vacation, I check that the lock Hell works. Hell yeah, you do. And now we will too. 
Keep it weird, ladies, but not so weird that you get intoxicated, so intoxicated that you accidentally fall asleep in somebody else's vacation rental and scare the living crap out of teenage girls. Holy shit. That is crazy. That's bananas. I am so glad that you survived and that you're here. <laughs> you're here. <laughs> you're here. I'm just, I'm amazed right now that you just woke up to snoring. Yeah. Like woke up to snoring. And there was a giant man in your room. Like, asleep. no, thank you. And the fact that you said he looked like he was like eight feet tall Holy when he woke shit. up. So scary. I'm amazed right now. Seriously. Well, I'm my so next out. one is going to be the story of a creepy lab partner and missing chloroform. Ooh. Because it speaks to me. I love that. It says, Hi, weirdos. My name is Taylor. And yes, you can use my name if you read this on the podcast. Even if you just read it to yourselves, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we that, did that and then that. some. Back in August, I was looking for a new podcast to listen to and found Morbid. I love the, all these new listeners. I know. By the second episode, I was hooked and found my new favorite <laughs> podcast. Thank I love you. how much re research and time you guys put into the stories and now you focus on the victims and their families in these terrible crimes but you still spit the facts about the case thank you thanks i sadly have already caught caught up with all the old episodes yes i work a very boring job at the moment but at least i get to binge listen to your podcasts all day long i love hearing your lives change and everything exciting going on ash congrats on your engagement and good luck with the wedding planning i hope it is the happiest day of your life thank you so wow. much that oh, was so kind alina congrats on the book i can't imagine writing a book i will read it one day i promise but i'm not a big book reader at the moment since i just spent four years reading chemistry textbooks that's fair you know what i forgive you that's fine and Free thank pass. you <laughs> i recently graduated with a degree in forensic chemistry holy, holy shit. shit with minors in biology criminal justice and forensic science. You're a badass. I'm about to join the police academy and hopefully work my way to become a crime scene investigator. My dream job. Holy you're the shit. best. You also kind of sound like you went down a similar path. I know. I'm like, Elena. damn, you're awesome. Um, I'm like, yeah, you're awesome. <laughs> so you can't even tell. catch up. I got it. I got it as it came out of my own mouth. So if you can't tell, I really like true crime. I have always thought of sending in a listener tale, but thought nothing in my life is as interesting as the other tales you have read. But I thought, why the hell not? YOLO, am I right? I have attached my <laughs> listener tail in a double space putifa, and it takes about six minutes to read. Oh. oh, look at you. I am sorry for all the typos and grammatical errors. Please don't get mad at me. I have never been good at writing. I'm going to get pissed at you. I'm already <laughs> pissed off. But enjoy. <laughs> Imagine right. if we were serious. Imagine if we were like, fuck you, You Taylor. know what? <laughs> On to the next <laughs> one. Forget it. <clears throat> this story starts four years ago when I was a very anxious sophomore in college, sitting in one of my chemistry labs when some guy ends up sitting next to me and asking to be my lab partner. Nope. A tale as old as time. We exchanged numbers to ask questions about lab and class, and I did not think any, anything of it. Further into the semester, he ended up sitting next to me in our lecture, lecture portion of the class and would start to say things very casually that would make me feel uncomfortable. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. One day we were talking about organic chem chemistry and realized we had the same female professor, but our classes were at, the dif at different times. A few weeks later, we were talking about a test that I did not do so hot on, and he said, don't worry, I will just force our professor to sleep with me and blackmail her so she'll give, me an a give you an A. What? Uh... <laughs> Immediately after lab was over, I texted my then boyfriend about what happened during lab, and he felt that I should try to, I should be nice to this guy because he seemed like he could be potentially dangerous based on the things he would say and was worried about my safety since we were long distance and I would walk to and from campus by myself because I was not paying $130 on, to park on campus. <laughs> um, you're not with that boyfriend, right? I hope not. Because... <laughs> If, a, if my says, boyfriend says, says then boyfriend, I'm assuming, because like be nice to this guy who makes you uncomfortable. Fuck that. What? That's dumb advice. Yeah, <laughs> that's no, really that's bad really, advice. Yeah, I don't know about that. After this comment, I was nice to him during lab and avoided him at everywhere else. But I would eventually end up getting multiple texts a day from him because you were nice. You to were him. nice. <laughs> that's the thing. You don't have to be nice from a nice girly. Don't be nice don't to be everybody. Nice. You know what? It's, you don't need to do it. It's just not necessary. No. Be nice to people who are nice to you and make you feel good. 
I hardly even answered any texts, but he was not seeming to get the hint and was trying to get me to invite him over to my apartment to study. No. Obviously, I never told him where I lived and always made up excuses since I didn't want to reject him and make him mad. <clears throat> I feel so bad that you were in this situation. I know. During the semester, he would find me when I was doing homework, no matter where I was on campus, and would come sit next to me in silence because no what because no way am I trying to have a conversation with this guy. The semester eventually came to an end, and I thought I would never have to see or hear from him again. Boy, was I wrong. Oh, no. The next year was my junior year, and I decided to become a chemistry laboratory teaching assistant. Look at you. Damn. Before school started, me and my then-boyfriend decided to break up. This is important later, I promise. I'm actually pretty happy about that, so I'm glad. <laughs> The week before school started, they had all, all the chemistry student workers come to a safety meeting because chemistry labs equal dangerous chemicals. I've heard that. While I was sitting on a lab bench waiting for the meeting to get started, guess who walked in through the door? No. Creepy ass lab partner. No. Turns out he got a job working in the stock room where he would be with all the lab equipment and lab chemicals. We made eye contact and he immediately came and sat next to me. Please move. He was trying to make conversation with me and asked about my boyfriend. And my dumbass told him that we broke up a couple of weeks prior. Mama. But you're like, I shouldn't have to lie. No. This then started, but like lie. <clears throat> but lie. This, <laughs> this then started the spam of text messages every day telling me my ex-boyfriend was stupid for breaking up with me and blah, blah, blah. Ugh. Once again, I never answered any of the messages. Eventually, he would start showing up to the labs what, that I was teaching and would just sit there by my desk to try to start conversation with while I was helping a student understand the lab. He finally stopped showing up to my labs, but quickly started showing up to my mandatory tutoring hours. Luckily, a lot of my students would also show up to my tut tutoring hours so I could help them with the pre-lab for the next week so I would never have to talk to him. Also, hearing all of these things is giving me like, like just wah, like back to... To chemistry class? Me too. Like, like getting the, <laughs> doing the like pre-lab, <clears throat> fucking pre-labs, man. I hate it, pre-labs. Um, it's just making me think of your book. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this year on my birthday, when I got out of class, he was standing outside the door with a birthday present. What? That I did not ask for. No, that's I so I didn't awkward. know what to do, so I said thank you and quickly walked to my next class. My senior year, he ended up being in one of my classes and sat in front of me and would still text me every single day. Like, bro -y, I'm not answering no. you. No. This semester, he kept texting me, asking to meet him after class, which I would not do, and would awkwardly sprint out of the class. After a few weeks of this happening, he sent me a very long text professing his love for me. I very quickly texted back saying, I'm sorry, but I am not interested and don't see you that way. Good for you. This started the spamming of my phone where he would be apologizing and that he still wanted to be friends. At this point, I was fed up with this, so I responded telling him that he was making me feel very uncomfortable and to stop texting me, which, of course, he did not do. And I ended up blocking his number. He would then follow me from our class to my next class apologizing, but I did not care anymore. So I would walk with headphones in and ignore every word he said. Ugh. He then bought, brought my birthday present to class to give to me since I was no longer talking to him. This was in November and my birthday is in February. What Talk about fuck? planning ahead. Since I blocked his number, he had started messaging me on Instagram, Facebook, and found my Snapchat. After a while, he eventually stopped messaging me and I thought this whole thing was behind me. I ended up meeting my now boyfriend. Yay. <laughs> one day we were walking to his car because he paid for a parking pass and I was still too stubborn to pay for one. <laughs> and we ran straight into creepy lab partner. I quickly put my head down and played on my phone until we passed each other and did not think anything of it. That night I got a very angry email from him through our student email saying that I lied to him and to go fuck myself and many other mean comments about how I, how terrible I was for telling him I did want did not want to date him. In cell behavior. Yep. His tone went from being sorry to being pissed. At this point I had no idea what to do, so I did the only thing I could think of. I called my parents and told them about the email since they knew everything else was going on. They both got very worried and told me I needed to go tell someone on campus that I trusted and explain the whole situation in case something did happen. The next day, I went and talked to my amazing boss, who encouraged me to go straight to the head of security of the chemistry, chemistry department after here, excuse me, head of the chemistry department after hearing the whole story and sat with me while I talked to the head of the chem department. They then told me that I should go to campus police and make a formal report. So the next day, my loving boyfriend drove me to the police station. 
I then gave my statement to some police officer that made me feel like I was overreacting and making this a bigger deal than it really was. A wow. douchebag is what you mean. So I ended up feeling like I made a mistake and felt stupid for this whole situation. The officer told me since he never threatened me, they really couldn't do anything. It's wild. Like the fucking, like you have to get hurt for them to do something. Yeah, literally. They're like, has he like tried to stab you though yet? No. Mm -hmm. And if he does that, let us know for sure. Seriously. I decided to move on with my life and never and thought that everything was behind me. But nope. I was wrong again. Oh, no. The next week, one of my TA friends told me that creepy lab partner was in the library with her and a friend and he... In a friend and he made a comment about how easy it would be to steal chloroform from the stock rooms. He did not think anything of it until the next day when she remembered everything that I had told her. She quickly went to report to the department head and I went to class. That night, me and my roommates were playing board games when I got a call from a random number on my phone. Turns out it was the department head and he wanted to let me know that he heard the co- about the comment and went to check the chloroform and some of it was missing. Oh my God. I immediately broke down in tears on our porch because holy shit. He then went on to tell me that he already contacted campus police and made them aware of this. The part that really sucked was I had a chemistry text- test the next day that I did not get out that I did not get out of. Obviously, I failed the shit out of that test. Oh. The next day, the department had walked into my lab and told me that the stockroom assistant counted wrong and there was no missing chloroform. Are you fucking kidding me? I would have been like, so I'm retaking the test, asshole. I'd be pissed. Oh After my talking God. to my friend that reported the comment, it turns out she was good friends with the stockroom assistant who checked and there was still some missing, but no one knew where it was. Wow. So the stockroom assistant is trying to like save his butt by being like, I didn't lose any chloroform. What yeah, are you exactly. About? After talking to some of the <clears throat> other chemistry student workers, creepy lab partner was making multiple other girls very uncomfortable. That is not mm-hmm. shocking. So after all of that, we have no idea if he took the missing chloroform. And I finally graduated and got to move out of that small town and away from creepy lab partner. So that is the story of Creepy Lab Partner. I still feel like I overreacted. You did not. But it happened, and I can't change it. So, oh, well, I guess. Keep it weird, weirdos, but not so weird. Ash, take it away. I'm not good with words. Girly, me either. But don't keep it so weird that you fucking steal some chloroform out of a fucking place where they keep chloroform. (laughs) Don't give it that you weird. Know, that chloroform place. I just feel like students should not be in charge of chloroform. <laughs> and that's my takeaway from this. That is my hot take with Ash. <laughs> hot take with Ash. Maybe we put like <laughs> the teachers in charge of the chloroform. I just I don't I don't know about this, guys. <laughs> I feel like we should have some more protocol in place. Ash is like, Kim students are wild thing. <laughs> I mean, sounds like it. It's wild west out there. <laughs> Them students are oh, wilding. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh man, you did. But can we just point out you did not overreact? Yeah, no, you did not overreact at all. And I hate that somebody made you feel that and way. And there is no such thing. I personally believe there's no such thing as overreacting when it comes to your feelings about your personal safety. Yeah, absolutely. I don't give a fuck if somebody makes you think that you're overreacting because fuck that person. Exactly. It's like if oh, I'm sorry. Am I? stressing you out with my feelings yeah. about somebody being a dick to me my Fuck bad. off that's your job campus police officer seriously Oy vey. Well, I think we've got time to read one more listener Which one are we going to do? I picked. My roommate was slowly being replaced by her doppelganger in her haunted chair factory. Yeah, you did pick that. Because I wanted to know a lot about the haunted chair factory. <laughs> yeah, I wanted and I to wanted that. to know if the doppelganger was a um, live person or if they had once been a live person and they are now a ghost. I also want to know that. Well, let's find out, motherfucker. Whoop. Hello, Deb Deb and maybe Ash and Elena, if I charm and dazzle Deb Deb enough. <laughs> you did. You did it. Let me address a couple pieces of business before we get into the fun. You can call me Nick. 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 All names have been changed. Attached is a double space putafa. It is short, but it hopefully packs a motherfucking punch. Punch, I punch. added the motherfucking. And now for the affection. You ladies have saved my life in more Aww. ways than you know. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Your work may, uh, maintains some karmic order in the universe. Oh I'm convinced. God. With I all love my you, love. Nick. Nick. That was so sweet. Damn. 
All right. It says, until now, I didn't think I had any tales to send in, but alas, there was the doppelganger affair. <laughs> the doppelganger affair. Oh, just that. I'm a medical student, another Hell theme, yeah. who was getting ready to match in my reg... Oh, fuck. You got this. I am a medical student who was getting ready to match into my residency program. There you go. Thanks. I'm trying to match into plastic and reconstructive surgery, Ooh, which is hard you. to do because it's very competitive. You're about to be on that show, Nip Tuck. There you go. I would love to just nail people Ooh. back together after... What a reference. <laughs> um, what a topical reference. I think I was thinking of it from the SNL for oh, yeah. skit. <laughs> that was on a nip talk. Nip talk. <laughs> I would love to just nail people back together after an accident or cancer or animal attack, etc. Yeah, just nail people back together. <laughs> yeah, just nip and tuck them back together. Returning someone to some idea of normalcy after a disfiguring tragedy would be the greatest honor of my life. Wow, I really like you. You are so kind. You're a really cool person, Nick. I know. But anyway, I currently live with my lovely black kitty who I adore, who I love more than my own life. I just really just threw a door yeah, in there she really went for I was it. like, you love them? No, you no, adore, you adore them. them. <laughs> we are bound to each other and we'll continue to meet lifetime after oh, lifetime into eternity. That's how I feel about Bobo. That's how I feel about Drew. <laughs> um, and my partner. He's here like too. animals. <laughs> yeah, well, and my cats, obviously. And my partner. He's here too. But before <laughs> living with go. them, I lived with two other students in a converted chair factory oh, in the shit. industrial area of our city. Both women were working on their doctorates in physiology. Holy shit. Uh, we all met while working in the research lab I got into when I was finishing my master's in physiology. I'm a professional student, as you can see. Hell yeah. The ladies, we'll call them Amy and Sarah, spent a lot of time in class, in the lab working on research, or in the library writing up their findings. Sarah was a little hummingbird of a person. Oh, I love that. Always talking to whoever and having a whole ass conversation. Extroverted freak. What's that like? <laughs> I didn't say that. They did. Amy was me. Ultra introverted, but, also, but able to mingle and drain the social battery when absolutely necessary. Oof. That tidbit of information will be important later. The chair factory turned apartment building was an impeding six-story structure that stood gazing south to the heart of downtown Detroit. Ooh, I see that. What a beautiful sentence. I see that. If I was an English teacher, A+. Plus. A+. Plus. A++. Plus, plus, plus. The apartment was a loft with high ceilings Ooh. and massive picture windows. I fucking love a picture window. <laughs> that brought me to my knees when the heating bill came every month. Yeah, except for that. From some quick research, the factory opened around 1910 on the outskirts of an area known as the Black Bottom, which is northeast of downtown Detroit. It was named for the rich, dark soil in the area that was framed or nope, that was farmed was by framed. French settlers. That the- <laughs> soil didn't do it. It was framed by those French settlers. It was farmed <laughs> by the French settlers in the prior centuries. The area then became a prominent place for black Detroiters around the turn of the 20th century. They built up the area into a rich, successful neighborhood. By the 1960s, it had appeared with urban... No, it had disappeared. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, my contacts are getting so dry. <laughs> and then I get... Um, blind by the 1960s <laughs> and then i get um blind so. yeah, I, wish, I wish you could see my hand motion just hand. i just like threw my hands out <laughs> by the 1960s it had disappeared with the urban renewal that was happening in detroit like a lot of buildings in detroit leading up to the city firing bankruptcy in 2015 the factory sat abandoned until good old gentrification swooped in and the factory was converted into needlessly expensive apartments <clears throat> that people living in the area for generations could that never sucks. afford that does suck. All of that to say, this building was old and creepy as fuck. Hell yeah, thanks for that little history lesson. I like it. I was mostly alone for the duration of the day while Amy and Sarah were at school curing cancer or, or whatever it is they were doing. <laughs> curing cancer, you know. I would stream my lectures online because your girl has raging ADHD and bipolar disorder, so I have a hard time sitting still and patiently waiting for class to be over, respectively. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people with mental he- health issues can be doctors as well. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let this be a lesson to the doubters. A mentally ill black girl who was covered in tattoos, who grew up well below the poverty line her entire life, is going to be a doctor. Fuck yeah. Where there's a will, there's a mother fucking way and i added the motherfucking nick 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 doctor nick doctor doctor nick doctor nick doctor nick it's you but like I was saying, I spent my days alone until my roommate, Sarah, started coming home. Oh, I know where we're headed. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's Uh-oh. not Sarah. 
Uh, she started coming home mid-afternoon a few days a week. I didn't think much of this because she was in her fifth year working on a di- her dissertation, so I figured writing at home was better for her zen or, or for her writing zen or whatever. I would say hi and other pleasantries. She would always simply nod and disappear into her room. Hmm. There were instances a few days later when Sarah came home early while I studied at the dining room table. I smiled slightly and asked her a question about a professor whose lab she worked in. Hey, how's Mr. Miller doing? nothing. She just stared at me with a small, pleasant smile on her face. Thinking she just didn't hear me, I repeated the question. How's Dr. Miller? Again, nothing, just that stare. After what felt like six hours, she broke our mutual stare and casually walked into her room. She's a tall gray. Yeah. (laughs) She's a tall gray. (laughs) That's what she is. Not a tall drink of water, a tall tall gray. gray. Much different. Thoroughly freaked out, I tried to shake it off and focus on my little doctor notes. (laughs) About two hours later, I heard a set of keys jingle outside the front door. I looked up to greet Amy coming through the door, but the sum of my internal organs fell through the floor when I saw Sarah walk through the door. Again. What the fuck? I wish I could say I did something smart, like tell Sarah what happened or launch an investigation (laughs) like the true scientists we are, but I'm a freeze kind of girl. (laughs) I stared... (laughs) I stared a hole through my laptop while Sarah chatted eagerly about her day and flitted around the apartment, never breaking the stream of consciousness flowing from her lips to take a breath. Shortly, Amy was also doing the jingle at the door and stepping over the threshold. Now that there was power in numbers, I worked up the courage to ask Sarah another question. Hey, Sarah, did you come home for lunch today? Oh, my God. It's not. You said, hey, Siri. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, was that your computer? That was my computer being like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I heard that weird noise, and then there was, like, a drop in the room next to me, like, slightly, because it's, like, <laughs> creaking or something, and I just shit myself. But cool. Not actively. Fun. Sorry. Um, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that just scared the shit out of me. Okay. Uh, so... <laughs> Sarah, did you come home for lunch today? That was an invitation to detail her entire afternoon. (laughs) Oh, no, I went to blah, 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 blah. No, blah, 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 blah. Did not include our apartment to stare at me like a tiny smiling psycho. Oh, shit. I tried to downplay the question because I was questioning my sanity at this point. I said, oh, I thought you came home a couple hours ago. Must have been another day I was thinking of. She continued, I haven't come home for lunch in a while. Weird. What the fuck? Nope, nope. I hate that. I hate that. All those times I saw her come home early, wasn't her. What? This piqued Amy's attention. Like at all? I've seen you here recently. I've seen you here early too recently. What? I loved and hated that validation. (laughs) I wasn't on the verge of psychosis, but I was still seeing something that I should not be seeing. But what do you do about that? We basically went on living our lives knowing that there was a creepy, silent version of Sarah wandering around our apartment. Doppelgangers are a sign that bad things are coming. Oh, are no. they not? That's what I've heard. So, <laughs> And I wasn't particularly interested in, in finding out what Final Destination shit was afoot. Oh, yeah, me neither. But I want to know. I, I want to know now because I'm not in there. Same if I was in that fucking apartment, I'd be like, well, you know, we don't know things. So I'm if just gonna- I was in that apartment, I would literally break the fuck out of my <laughs> lease and live anywhere else. I was just like, if I was in that apartment, I would not be in that apartment. That's exactly <laughs> where I would be. Not there. Another few weeks passed without a sight of silent Sarah. Oh. Until one night. Oh. To preface, I have the bladder of a small pupperini. <laughs> Oh, a small pepperoni. Oh, pepperoni! I said. I said pepperoni. Pepperoni. I get up two or three times every night to go potty. So, per my usual schedule, I awoke with my bladder screaming for relief. <laughs> I crawled out of bed and I stepped toward the door of my bedroom. Oh no! no. Oh fucking no. No, no! bitch! Nope. Oh my god. Nope. Upon opening my bedroom door, the form of Sarah stood outside my door, softly lit by Christmas lights strung around my room. No, fuck that. Smiling softly, nope. she turned and nearly drifted to the bathroom, leaving me stunned. So I thought, shit, I need to go in there. <laughs> in that moment, my bladder needed me to assert my dominance. It needed me to be the head bitch in charge in that moment and kick silent Sarah out of the potty. Fully expecting to be dragged to hell through the drain of the shower, I approached the bathroom and flicked on the light. Nothing. Just an empty bathroom. Fully 
expecting to be dragged to hell through the dream? And that's everything. We didn't see Silent Sarah after that. Holy we shit. all moved out and went on with our respective careers. Hate to end it like that. Holy but shit. life doesn't always deliver a perfect it's story true. start to finish. Regardless, I wish you ladies the best of luck with life, family, and business and any endeavors you have before you. And also to you. You too, Nick. All my love, Dr. Nick. Hell yeah, Nick. Hell motherfucking yeah. That one was the scariest thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. That was so creepy. I I just don't even know what to say. I think I genuinely, this is so foul, but I think I genuinely would have found a bottle to pee in that night. Yeah. I'm not jokes. Potentially, yes. <laughs> One hundo P, yes. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'd be going in that. I got that from somebody, and I can't think of who I got that from. What? Hundo P. Hundo P. I've been saying it a lot lately, like, you know, hundo 100%, P. but like hundo P. I must have got it from somebody on Bravo. Probably. Just got to give credit where credit's due. That, gi- that gives lots of Bravo vibes. Yeah. Well, anyways, this has been Listener Tales. Wow. I'm really happy to be back. I don't remember if I was on the last one or not. Um, uh, I, think I don't were. think I was. I don't oh, know. you think I was. Okay. Maybe. I, I'm not really sure where we, we had, are in the rotation We anymore. had special guest Sheena Melwani and Trid on at one point. We did. They're beautiful souls. I fucking love them with my whole entire being. She's my beautiful Luna Moth. Yeah, she's just my shishi. Yeah. And if anybody else calls her that, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> so, love you guys. And we hope you keep listening. And we hope you keep it weird. But not so weird that you call my best friend shishi because I'll kill you. <laughs> not not as weird kidding. as we've been keeping it tonight. So. It's, it's late. It's late. I love you. Hello. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Morbid early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus and Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.